Morning. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to be with you today. It's a little extra dark here this morning uh, because of the clouds, so it's a little gloomy. Woke up with um, a song on my mind, Light Dawns on a Dreary World. And uh, I hope the light does dawn on us eventually. <laughs> but for now, we're in the gray and in a little bit of the dark, and that's okay because it's uh, it's peaceful. Still a little bit of rain dripping. I didn't look at the forecast. I don't know if we're done with the rain or if it's going to continue. Um, but it's a good morning to just kind of be. And that's a little bit of what I wanted to talk about for a devotion today. I, I don't have much to say, um, but maybe I have a little bit for us to ponder. Um, and it would be great to, to hear what y'all have to say about these things too. But let's start with a prayer. And then we'll, um, we'll hop into this devotion. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to be together. Thank you for this community and all that it does to support one another. Thank you for rain. Uh, we give you thanks for rain and all that it does in this world to help uh, plants grow, to help nourish the ground, to help um, sustain your creation uh, and we ask for your presence when there is too much rain in this world uh, with floods or, or storms um, but we give you thanks for all that you do to to continue to keep your creation going today we ask that you be with us in spirit and um, that your spirit guide us as we discuss a little bit of your word and your will for our lives um, and that you fill us up with something inspiring today uh, to make us go out and do something in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today, like I said, I, I um, just wanted to talk a little bit about something and then mostly kind of leave it up to y'all to, to see what you have to say. Um, I was talking to a student the other day, and they mentioned that, you know, all, all we talk about nowadays is COVID. <laughs> and it it gets old after a while. It's not that it's not important to talk about COVID, to talk about all the things going on in a pandemic. That That's good. But um, but it does seem that it's the topic of all of our conversations. Even when I'm sitting there talking about football, it, it comes back to COVID to talk about, well, actually, you know, this guy would have played too, but he tested positive and had to quarantine for a couple weeks. So it it just feels like it's everywhere. It's infiltrating all parts of our our lives. And I guess that's the nature of a pandemic, right? Um, but sometimes when when all of our conversations are about COVID, we might get lost in some of the other important things happening in our lives. We, those things might get lost. Um, and so one thing I, I've tried to do more during this pandemic is pray because it, it makes me sit down and think about something um, that's important or something that's happening around me that might not necessarily be the pandemic. And one thing I, I've uh, thought that might be nice for the campus ministry, we've started to add a little bit to our Instagram. Instagram is different from Facebook <laughs> and it's another social media platform and it's something that I'm still getting used to. Um, and I, I think it's just a, another way to connect with each other. And we're trying to use our Instagram a little bit more. So every Monday morning on our Instagram, we post a picture and something that allows for people to respond with something that they're praying for that week. So we say, good morning. Uh, it's a new week. Uh, what are you praying for this week? And so it gives people an opportunity to sit down and think, what am I praying for? Do I have a big test? Do I have a, a loved one in the hospital? Do I have um, just, am I tired and I need to lay down and, and get some good nights of sleep this week. You know, what are you praying for this week? So I think that's something that uh, allows us some time to think ahead and, and to to pray about things that are not just the pandemic. And then at the end of the week on our Instagram on Fridays, uh, we try to post something in the evenings that says, hey, looking back at the week, what are you grateful for? What happened this week that gave you a little bit of joy? What um, what did you not expect to happen, but that did and really energized you? You know, what are you grateful for from this past week? And I think those kind of bookends on, on our weekdays 
um, help us to maybe our prayers and our our gratefulness are about the pandemic maybe we pray for a test to come back negative and by the end of the week we're grateful that it did or maybe it gives us a chance to break out of that and to think a little bit wider and to make sure that we're paying attention to everything going on in our lives too and i think it could be a refreshing thing these two bookends what are you praying for at the beginning of the week to give you a little extra inspiration and then at the end of the week looking back where where did you see god what are you grateful for what um what unexpected joy did you experience and i think that's a good way to end the week and to go into the weekend um, these are two bookends that just open us up to different ways of thought i think and so i i would ask the same questions to y'all um what what are you praying for what what are you grateful for and it could be about anything and it could be simple things it could be big things it could be scary things it could be happy things um, but what are you praying for and what are you grateful for you don't have to share with everybody or if you want to send me an email so i know that i can pass along to pastor john that we can be praying for you if you want to add something to our prayer list for sundays um or in the newsletter but at least for yourself to take some time today and think about what am i praying for what should i be praying for um, and what am I grateful for? If you don't always take the time to sit and think about it, then we might miss our opportunity to be grateful for something. I know that sounds silly, but um, I know I, I get caught up in things and, and don't always take the time to think about joy. I'm going to read a, a passage from Isaiah that's a, a beautiful passage. We, we read it every year. I don't exactly know when it comes. I feel like it comes up every year, at least often in the lectionary um, and it's a great passage about joy um, and about God's abundance and how it gives us joy um, but the ending it really hits home with joy and I, I did a an exercise yesterday in a zoom call with some colleagues and it was um, an exercise of exploring I'm trying to figure out the the words um, shoot I can't remember the exact words she had, but it was uh, joy from the past. So like um, in our rear view, ah, man, I'm going to look it up while I'm finding this uh, Isaiah passage too. The, the word is escaping me right now, but let me look for this Isaiah passage. And that whole idea of the activity was to think back on something that is a, a joyful memory to to kind of look back at something that you might not think about every day but to to think of times in your life when you felt joy and to to let those come up i'm trying to find the exact word she used real quick because it, it's like a scientific thing <laughs> but this um this isaiah passage really comes home and uh brings it home here here we go let me find it here. Retrospective joy. Retrospective joy. And that's the looking back that I was trying to find that word. So retrospective joy to, to understand that um, there are things in your life that have been joyful and to carry those with you into the future too so that you can rely on them in times when you need a little extra joy in your lives and I think that's a little bit what we do with that bookend that what are you grateful for this week we're looking back at some retrospective joy but let me read this passage say a few things about joy and then let's go about our days this is from Isaiah 55 and this is the NIV version of the Bible come all you who are thirsty come to the waters and you who have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money without cost why spend money on what is not bread and labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. 
Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown from an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Amen. Beautiful words. I love this idea of the trees clapping their hands. Uh, it's one of my favorite images uh, to read in passages from the Bible. But um, this idea of joy and that God will give us something that will bring us joy and peace and comfort and faith and hope in our lives um, is an incredible passage. Uh, so look back at some retrospective joy. When I was doing this this activity the other day, um, I, I had a hard time at first because I was think I was trying to think of something huge in my life that that was a, a big joyful moment and not that it doesn't happen but it's hard to come up with something that feels big enough right um, but all I kept finding were small moments of joy that that made me smile or made me laugh in the middle of the day um, and things like that and I think that's just as good. You don't have to have these huge moments of joy. What are some things that you're grateful for that just brightened a couple minutes of your day? And I think that's just as important in this idea of retrospective joy too. Um, and it's not just to look back and to say, you know what, it wasn't really as bad as I thought back then, but it's to look back at these moments that you might be able to carry with you and that are just ingrained in you and in your memory. Um, so that they're there in moments that you need them the most. That's at least what I got out of that activity of retrospective joy, now that I remember the word. Isn't that, it rolls off the tongue. I'm glad I went back to find it. Retrospective joy. But two questions. What are you praying for? And what are you grateful for? Those are some good things to think about right now as we talk and think about joy. Well, the rain is falling, and it will not return to God and the heavens <laughs> having not done its work here on the ground. The trees are not clapping their hands. Uh, but let's pray and let's go about our days thinking about joy and, and continuing to pray um, for each other, with each other, uh, and for all of our loved ones. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for moments of joy, bouts of joy in our lives, days full of joy. We thank you for those joyful memories that we can take with us when we need them the most. And we thank you for your continued presence uh, in times of joy and in times of sorrow um, so that you can fill us up with faith, hope, and love when we need it uh, and that we can pass those things to each other um, to continue to support and sustain each other in this world. We ask that you be with us today, that you guide us to do something good in this world today, whether from home or safely out and about. Uh, but we also ask that you uh, fill us up with with faith so that we can continue to love you and love our neighbor each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. It's been a good morning and